friends, and welcome to the Kinsman Free Public Library's YouTube show, Discovering with Dewey. My name is Miss Kim, and I'm the director of the library. I'm so happy you're here with me today to discover something new. Now, friends, can you give a big warm hello to the smartest worm I know, Dewey the Library Bookworm? Hi, Miss Kim, and hello to all our friends watching. Hi, Dewey. Thank you so much for being here today to help us discover something new. How you doing today, Dewey? I'm doing great today, Miss Kim. I'm really enjoying all the spring rain we've been getting. Really? I'd much prefer a sunny day to a rainy one. Oh, not me, Miss Kim. The sun dries out my beautiful skin. The rain keeps the soil nice and moist. And this allows me to scoot along quickly and easily. Oh, I see. So you're like a regular old speedster in the rain, huh, Dewey? <laughs> vroom, vroom, look out, speedster Dewey coming through. <laughs> you know, Dewey, I really enjoy taking nice long walks on warm, breezy spring days. Sure beats walking in the cold snow. Brrr. I agree, Miss Kim. I think most people would agree with you there. Yeah, except this one guy I know. This guy loves to take walks in the snow. Oh, really, Miss Kim? Who's that? It's my dog, Buck. Buck is a member of the breed of dogs known as Siberian Husky. He gets so excited when we go on walks in the snow. He practically pulls me because he just wants to run and run. You know, I have to bundle up and I still get cold, but not Buck. The cold air doesn't seem to bother him at all. You know, Dewey, I've always wondered why Buck likes the cold, snowy weather so much. Hey, I just had a great idea, Dewey. Do you think we could use the Dewey Decimal System to find books that might tell me all about Siberian Huskies and why they love the snow so much? That's a wonderful idea, Miss Kim. We sure can. To remind our friends at home, the Dewey Decimal System is a numbering system that the library uses as a way to put books in order by subject. It places the books on the shelf by subject using numbers from 000 to 999. It's called decimal because it uses numbers to the right of the decimal point to add more detail. Thanks for the reminder, Dewey. So, because you're such a smart bookworm and such a pro at the Dewey Decimal System, can you tell us what the Dewey Decimal number is for Siberian Huskies? I sure do, Miss Kim. The Dewey Decimal number for Siberian Huskies is 636.73. Yay! 636.73. Awesome. Thanks, Dewey. I'm going to head to the bookshelf right now and look for the number 636.73 to get some books on Siberian Huskies. Hang tight, friends. I'll be back in a flash. All right, friends, I'm back and I found some great books. This nonfiction book titled Awesome Dogs, Siberian Huskies by Chris Bowman looks like it might have some really helpful information about Siberian Huskies. Maybe it'll even help to explain why Buck likes the cold weather. Hey, should I read it now to all of you so we can find out? Yay, story time! I love story time! Okay, this book is called Awesome Dogs, Siberian Huskies, and it is by Chris Bowman. And look, you can see the Dewey Decimal number right there. Let me get it nice and close to the camera so you can see it. There it is, 636.73. What are Siberian Huskies? Siberian Huskies are calm and happy dogs. They are often called Huskies for short. This medium-sized breed likes cold weather. Huskies look friendly. Their ears stick up and they have either brown or blue eyes. Some have one of each. 
Wow, that's really cool, huh? Siberian Huskies have a double coat. Their thick undercoats keep them warm during the winter. That must be why Buck likes the cold so much. Their outer fur is medium length. They shed often. Their fur is usually white with gray, black, or red coloring. Some have a gouty or sable coloring. And I've even seen all white huskies. They may have masks across their faces. See that? That's called a mask. Thousands of years ago, the Chuchki people of Siberia first bred Siberian huskies. Here's Siberia right here all the way. So here we are over here in the United States and look all the way over here on the other side of the world is Siberia. They needed to carry meat home from hunting. So they used huskies to pull their sleds. In the early 1900s, people brought Siberian huskies to Alaska. The dogs became known for running. They won many sled dog races. Oh, I wonder if that's what Buck is doing on our walks, pretending he's pulling a sled. In 1925, teams of Huskies saved lives. They delivered medicine to people in Nome, Alaska. You might have seen something like this on the movie Togo. Today, Siberian Huskies are placed in the working group by the American Kennel Club. See, and it shows a little bit about the Husky. There's their ears that stand up and their thick double coat and their bushy tail. These athletic dogs love to run long distances. This helps them to perform special jobs. Many Siberian Huskies are sled dogs. Some work in search and rescue. These friendly dogs like to be in packs. Huskies are playful with children and other pets, and they do well in big families. And what's really cool about this book is at the end of the book, it has a glossary. So if you came across some words that you weren't sure what they meant, you can look them up in the back in the glossary and it'll tell you the meaning. And that's the end of Awesome Dogs, Siberian Huskies by Chris Bowman. That was a great book, Miss Kim. I really learned a lot about Siberian Huskies. I never knew that Huskies had two coats or layers of fur. This could explain why they don't get cold in the winter. For sure, Dewey. It also explains why Buck sheds so much fur around the house. It was really cool to learn about how Huskies were bred to be snow sled dogs. No wonder why Buck loves the snow so much and pulls me so hard on our winter walks. Hey, Dewey, I have a great idea. Would you all like to meet Buck? My daughter Kylie can join us and tell us all about Buck so we can learn even more about Siberian Huskies. Kylie is somewhat of a husky expert, so let's go find them for Ask an Expert. Okay, everyone, I'm back, and I'm here with our expert, Kylie Garrett. So you might remember Kylie from uh, last episode's Music Moments with Kylie. Um, so I didn't have to go far today to find an expert on Huskies. I just had to go to my family room. So Kylie, I was going to go ahead and ask you a couple questions about Huskies. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Can you tell us who this is? This is Buck. Maybe if we put this like this, he'll, he'll look at the camera. How about that? Let's try that. Okay. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Buck? How long have you, how long have we had Buck in our family? We've had Buck for a year. Okay. And how old was he when we adopted him? 
he was three years old. Three months. Three months. Three months old, yeah. Um, and what made us decide to adopt Buck? Come here, Bucky. Well, um, actually, we got Buck from my aunt because she got him from she got him from a breeder, uh -huh. and she already had a dog at home, and they didn't get along that well. So she had to give him away to somebody else. So she came to us, and she asked us if we wanted him. And we said, yeah, because we were already looking for a dog. Awesome. So it seems like Buck's always been with us, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Buck? What does Buck like to eat? What is he eating right now? He loves treats and he loves meat. <laughs> um, the healthiest option is actually his real food, which is really hard for him to eat sometimes. He also loves carrots. He loves carrots? Yes. I thought only bunnies liked carrots. Well, actually, he likes them because they're sweet and they're crunchy, and dogs like to chew on crunchy stuff like bones. Okay. And he loves carrots because of the texture and how they taste. Yeah, does really. it feel good on his teeth? Yes, it feels really good on his teeth. You know, I read once, too, that chewing helps to relax dogs. They do. It, it really helps them. Cool. Um, so um it's important that we give buck some safe things to chew on right yes so he doesn't eat things like our shoes or our couch yes he does uh, eat some things i don't know if he's going to cooperate but i was hoping we might be able to get a close-up of bucky's teeth um right now he's what's he what's he playing with right now what is that well that is his circle hard toy where you can put treats inside of the little teeth and it's hard for him to get the treats out so it takes a little while for him to come down Oh, that is really cool. So kind of like a brain game? Yes. All right. And it keeps him busy. And yes, it keeps him really busy. So what do you have in there right now? Is that? That's beef sticks. Beef sticks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit, what is Bucky's favorite things to do? What does Bucky like to do? He loves to zoom. Zoom? What's Zoom? That's running around the house very fast and not stopping. Oh, okay. And we <laughs> like to chase him around. And he also loves to bring us his toys, even when you're not supposed to pull on them. <laughs> like that one, for instance. He's supposed to chew on that one. And um, here's some of, some of his toys here. So what do you do with this one? That one, he, it's a tough to toy where you take uh, part of it, mm -hmm. and he takes the other half, and you guys pull on it. So. Oh, okay. And this is a donut toy where he's supposed to just chew on it, but sometimes he tries to bring it to us as well. And what's Bucky's favorite kind of toys? The ones that what? He really likes the squeaky toys. <laughs> the ones that squeak. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Bucky is still a puppy, right? He's, yes. He's still young, so he has a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things do you you and the rest of us do to make sure he gets rid of that energy well actually my dad walks him for a couple miles a day in the morning oh wow so that gives him a little bit of his energy out but he still has a lot of energy throughout the day now it's spring out but i see the snow outside the window do you yeah. think bucky would like to walk in the snow he, he likes snow he likes the snow yes. yeah all right. In our book, we learned a little bit about the parts of, of Bucky. So we learned about his tall ears that stand mm -hmm. up. And a little bit, um, we learned that they have a double coat. Can you show us a little bit yes, what that okay. means by double coat? Okay. So this stuff, this black stuff right here, it's a little bit longer. Yeah. Is his, <laughs> his front coat. Okay. So that was his top coat. And this over here is a little bit white. <laughs> he didn't like that very it's much, did he? a little bit white. And it's his... Um, after coat. His undercoat? His undercoat, yes. Yeah. And it's so, a lot softer than this, as you can tell. Oh, so that white stuff is the stuff that mostly sheds all through the house. Huh? Yes. <laughs> as you can see, so what do we do to try and keep that in in, in um, kind of control? Well, we brush him yeah. a bunch. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we pull it out and throw it in the trash because to get rid of it, Yeah. the chunks. And we take them to the groomer. Yes, huh? we take them to the groomer. Yeah. And what that that big fluffy thing on the on his back? What do we call that? We call that his fluff puff. His fluff puff. His big fluffy tail. Yes. Awesome. So um, we sure did learn a lot today about Buck. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to say thank you for telling us all about Bucky. You're welcome. And um, what do you, would you recommend to our friends to get a husky? Yes, if you like to run around and chase them when they have stuff in their mouth, or if you like. Big energy dogs, and it's a very good pet to get.
Yes, high energy, great family dogs, huh? mm -hmm. very friendly. And before we go, do you think maybe we could try to get Bucky to do one of his tricks? Yes, actually. all right. Yep. Okay, you're gonna go get a treat. While you're doing that, maybe I can get Bucky to say I love you. Let's try that. Bucky, I want woo. I want woo. Bucky, I want woo. I want woo. I want woo. <laughs> Can you sing? Can you sing? Oh, what's Kylie got? <laughs> okay. All right, let's see if we can get him to do a treat, a trick. All right, okay. Bucky, right? No. Sit. <laughs> they burp a lot. So. <laughs> Bucky, sit. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Can you paw? Good boy. Wait, lay down. <laughs> it's a good boy. It is a good boy. Yes, it is. Can you say, I love you? <laughs> How about you give me... Dog check. Dog check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and give me your paw again. Thank you. Lay down. Very and good. paw. Good boy. So that was some of the tricks that we teach that we taught him. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kylie, so much for joining us today and letting us meet Buck. And we'll tell our friends bye bye now. Bucky, bye. can you say bye? Bucky, say bye bye. bye. We think so too. Buck is my best friend, Dewey. Did you know that Huskies make excellent friends? They do? They sure do. Hey, I got a book about a little polar bear who learns how wonderful it can be to have a Husky as a friend. Say, how about we go upstairs and read it now? Yay, another story! Let's hear it! Let's hear it! This book is called Little Polar Bear and the Husky Pup, and it's written and illustrated by Hans de Beer. Lars, the little polar bear, lived at the North Pole, where there are no trees or flowers, just ice and snow. Lars didn't mind. He loved to go for long walks across the ice always wondering where what he might find behind the next snow hill. One day, Lars walked even farther than usual, and he was very hungry. He lifted his nose and sniffed. There was a delicious smell in the air, but he didn't know what it was. The delicious smell came from an igloo. That meant there were people. Lars' father had warned him to stay away from people. They're dangerous, he always said. But the smell from the igloo was so tempting that Lars couldn't resist. He crawled closer, keeping well away from a team of sled dogs, who seemed to be fast asleep. Suddenly, there was a growl. The huskies jumped up and strained their leashes. The leashes snapped, and the whole team rushed Lars, barking furiously. Lars was lucky he had a head start. When the dogs saw they would never catch up with him, they lost interest and turned back. At last, Lars could stop and catch his breath. He crawled into an ice cave and went to sleep. He was woken by a strange noise. It sounded like a whimper, but Lars couldn't see where it came from. So he walked over to a deep crack in the ice and peered down. There sat a little sad husky. Although the other dogs had given him a fright, he felt sorry for this little one. Don't be frightened, said Lars. I'll help you. Lars started to push his snow into the hole. 
He worked and worked until a pile of snow was big enough to let the little dog climb all the way out. But as soon as the puppy was back on firm ground, he began to growl. Hey, I just helped you, said Lars. The puppy barked. How ungrateful, thought Lars. He turned away in disgust and bounded off toward the sea. The little dog ran after him. Lars ran across chunks of ice until he had left the puppy far behind. The puppy sat down on a drifting piece of ice and howled pitifully, Oh, 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 oh! I will gladly help, Lars shouted to the puppy, but I don't want to be growled at. The little dog looked embarrassed. I won't growl, he said. I promise. Please, don't leave me. So Lars towed the puppy back to shore. What's your name, he asked. Mine's Lars. I'm Flo. Can you see the little husky reading our book with us? I'm Flo. Will you take me back to the igloo? I want my mother, and I'm hungry. I'll take you home tomorrow if it stops snowing, said Lars. We can wait out the storm here. Then Lars caught some fish and offered them to Flo, who gobbled it up. That wasn't as good as meat, Flo complained. Well, you'll have meat again soon, said Lars. He shoveled snow into a pile, and they lay down behind it to sleep, sheltered from the icy wind. The next morning, Lars and Flo set off under a clear blue sky to find the igloo. But when they got there, the dogs had gone, and the snow had covered their tracks. I want my mother, wailed Flo. Then he began to howl louder than ever. This time, Lars understood why. He tried to comfort the little dog. We'll find her, he said. Tell me, which way were you heading? Um, I think Buck really likes this book. What do you guys think? <laughs> To the town by the sea, where lots of people live. Oh, yes, I know it, said Lars. Let's go. The little polar bear and the puppy walked on and on. They didn't stop even when darkness fell. So they didn't see the hunters until it was almost too late. They had to duck down quickly behind some rocks. The hunters came closer and closer. And suddenly, Flo began to growl. Shh, hissed hot Mars, Lars. You'll give us away. But the impetuous puppy jumped up and started barking. <gasps> huh? It's just a stray dog, said one of the hunters, laughing. And then he and his friends got back on their snowbill, snowmobiles and drove away. Phew! You did the right thing after all, said Lars. But I don't think we should go any further tonight. We'll find your mother tomorrow. In the morning, they walked to the sea. A pair of seals was basking on the shore. Flo charged at them, barking excitedly. Stop, Flo! Leave them alone, shouted Lars as the seals fled into the water. Suddenly, Flo stopped barking. Lars, look at this, he yapped. He had found an old kayak. Kayaks belong to people, said Lars, looking anxious, and people are dangerous. He sniffed the kayak all over, and then he said, It's all right. Nobody has used this kayak in a long time. What a good find. Now we can travel twice as fast. I'm going to get into the kayak. Paddling a kayak isn't as easy as it looks, said Lars, as they wobbled across the water. Never mind, said Flo. I think we're nearly here. Tonight, we'll have meat for supper. Hooray! Listen, said Mar Lars sternly. You are not to run off after meat. You must stay close to me. In the twilight, as the kayak slipped silently towards the town, they both began to feel nervous. Don't make a sound, Flo, whispered Lars. And for once, Flo kept his mouth shut tight.
But the moment they stopped ashore, Flo cried, I smell food! And before Lars could stop him, he was gone! What was Lars to do? As he stood wondering, he heard a shout, Stop! Thief! Uh Uh-oh, what do you think happened? I wonder if Flo did it. And just then, Flo ran past him with a funny chain hanging from his mouth. Lars ran after him. And when they were a safe distance from the town, Flo stopped and laid the funny chain at Lars' feet. That smells so good, said Lars. Just wait till you taste it, said Flo. It's not like fish at all. But the more Flo ate, the sadder he seemed to be. Will I ever find my mother? He said mournfully. And then he lifted his little head and gave a desperate howl. Oh, there he goes again, thought Lars. What could he do to keep the reckless little creature quiet? I don't know if he has any tricks. Maybe he could teach me so I could keep Bucky quiet during our story. (laughs) Then Lars heard loud, excited barks. There was no time to run away. Suddenly, he was surrounded by dogs, but they didn't hurt him. One of them was Flo's mother. She had heard her puppy howling and rushed to find him. Flo told his mother how Lars had found him and brought him to the town. Thank you, Lars, she said. Now you must let us take you home. The two friends hopped onto the dog sled and were whisked away. This is more fun than kayaking, said Lars happily. Lars' parents were amazed to see Lars jump off a dog sled and even more amazed by the funny chain that Flo had laid at their feet. The chain of hot dogs. Here's something that tastes much better than fish, he told them. And then he turned to Lars and said, I want you to have my collar. It will help you remember me. The dog team barked a farewell and sped away. And as Flo's sled disappeared over the horizon, Lars put down the collar, raised his head, and howled. How strange it sounded and how sad, thought his parents. After that, Lars was often seen with a smile on his face and a bright red collar around his neck. The end. What a wonderful story of friendship between a little polar bear and a tiny husky puppy. Thanks, Miss Kim. That was a great story. Dogs really are man's best friend. When they're not trying to eat us worms, that is. (laughs) Say. I wonder if Kylie knows a fun song about dogs. Let's tune in right now to Music Moments with Kylie to find out. Hi guys, I'm Kylie Gare and I'm going to sing bingo. Stop along if you feel like it. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. O B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name. O There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. O I N G O I N G O I N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, N G O, N G O, N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Mo, Gio, Gio, Gio and Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Mo. Oh, 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 oh and. 
jumping goat was his name, oh. <clears throat> there was a farmer had a dog and Thingo was his name, oh. Go was his name oh. B I N G O B I N G O Oh oh sorry sorry <laughs> I didn't realize you were back That was a great song Thanks kindly for bringing us today's music moment Jeez Miss Kim I sure did learn a lot today about Siberian huskies Thanks for letting us all beat Buck. It was my pleasure. And thank you, Dewey, for sharing your knowledge about the Dewey Decimal System, which helped me to find great books on Siberian Huskies. And thank you, friends, for joining us. I had a lot of fun discovering with Dewey today, and I hope you did too, friends. Oh, and don't forget to check the description below where you can find links to more dog stories and also for today's crafting moment. You can find a fun dog craft that you can do at home. Thanks for coming today, and we can't wait to see you next time on Discovering with Dewey. That's me. Mm -hmm.